Welcome to Afros and Audio's Black History Month interview series. My name is Talib Jasir, founder and CEO of Afros and Audio Podcast Festival and the Vanguard Podcast Network. I'm excited to spotlight 29 outstanding indie podcast creatives and professionals who answer the call to be a part of the series. My guest today is Wise Grisette. Welcome and thank you for being here. How are you? I'm doing good, man. Thank you for having me. How are you? Good, man. I'm I'm doing great. Um, you are my first guest and we go way back, man. Um, way, back to... way, 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 way back. <laughs> yeah. 2019, before there ever was a uh, first conference. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate you for that. And we'll definitely talk about that if we got some time. But today is all about you, bro. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So it's, I'm glad to have you. Um, once again, thank you for being here. So I want you to tell the folks, I just made mention that we know each other uh, from before. our first, The first Afros and Audio Conference in 2019 but let's tell the people a little bit about yourself. So give the mm -hmm. folks a, a bit more background about WISE. Yeah, for sure. So uh, I guess a quick summary is like, I am just a audio enthusiast and early adopter for technology, um, just at heart. So um, in 2015, I, after having, after a couple of years of having a podcast myself called the Encore Radio Show, I launched the Indie Creative Network. It's a podcast network. Um, Ah, so podcast network here that I created to provide tools and resources to black and brown podcast producers. Uh, it took me a long time to get there, to come up with like even this, that, like that quick verbiage, because I was really just trying to find a way to help my community and put it in a space that was easy for them to comprehend at a time where people weren't really, you know, using podcasts like that as a, a means or of uh, a medium, excuse me, of uh, media. So to this day now, uh, I'm a podcast producer. I still own Indie Creative Network. Um, I work with a lot of podcasts, including care, like shows like Carefree Black Girl Podcast, uh, Totally Women, Black Nuance, and so on and so forth. Shout out to all the producers I've worked with over these past uh, 11 years now. Can I even believe it? Uh, but yeah, just happy to be here right now. Um, like Talib said, you know, we had a chance to meet each other back in 2019 uh, prior to Afros and audio itself. It was a pleasure working with you then. I had the opportunity to um, come to Afros and audio the fifth anniversary this year. And uh, it was just good to see you and see everyone and reconnect with the community. So yeah, happy to be here. For sure, for sure. Thank you. Thank you, man. So um, share a little bit about your journey. You graduated with the BA in website management, internet commerce, mm -hmm. um, and now you are this figure in podcasting. You moved your tr all those transferable skills, which I think is important, right, for people mm -hmm. to understand that um, there are skills that we can acquire um, that are completely, in our mind, it's for something completely different. Mm -hmm. And podcasting, <laughs> there's yeah. this opportunity here to use those same skills. Um, that education, all of that in this industry. So what made you choose podcasting and how has the your tech background supported you in this industry? Man, so uh, I will say I have to give credit to uh, Joanna Logan. She had this uh, radio show at the time at Hunter College called the Jolo Experience. And essentially what she did, it was college radio. What she did was she just, you know, highlighted people that were at Hunter or people that she knew from like Queens and the New York City area uh, that were doing things. You know, New York is a hella creative city. So we have a bottleneck of creatives. And I happen to be, had the pleasure of being one of those in 2011, May, I used to have this uh, website called Words of Wisdom where I wrote like poems and like just a lot of things, covered a lot of stuff for myself uh, just as I was uh, expanding my own creative ventures post-college, post a lot of things actually. Uh, so I got to say, like, I left work early one September afternoon and went to do this interview and I sat in front of the mic and I heard my voice back through the headphones and I got to say, I fell in love. Now, I'm a Leo, so I fell in love with my own voice. But at the same time, you know, I just realized like, wow, like this feels good. You know, uh, I want to do this more. So. Fast forward a couple months later, she was looking for a co-host and I was just like, you know what? 
why don't I be a co-host? Like, I work in Manhattan, you know, like I can just uh, pop over to Hunter after I'm finished with work. We record some of the episodes and just go from there. So that experience is how I got into podcasting. Um, the transferable skills part happened maybe like a year later or so. Uh, Joe, uh, Joe was graduating from Hunter, and with that, her show was going to be over. So it's either... I now give up this newfound love that I have of just like interviewing people, meeting people and sitting in front of the mic uh, on a weekly or biweekly basis, or I started on my own. So uh, I found a local online radio station in New York City and I just said, hey, you know what? I want to create a show. Um, I see you have a bunch of shows on your roster. I don't see one that's like the one I would want to create. So let me do that. and. Uh, uh, that that worked out. Obviously, I launched the Encore Radio Show in, to, in 2012, and for five years, I documented some of the greatest independent artists, some of the greatest uh, just independent people in general across the city, and eventually even beyond. I traveled to Toronto and and South by Southwest and Florida just to interview people and, and just get to know them a little bit more and to share their experiences with my audience. So. Uh, that's the beginning of the journey you know a whole lot of stuff happened in between there but uh yeah that was my my yellow brick road story <laughs> wow that's really awesome man uh i some a lot of times i think about podcasters and myself included and we often think about like 2017 as like old heads mm -hmm. but 2011 <laughs> His old head. <laughs> you know what I mean, you've been doing this for quite some time and um and that's awesome, man. So I know you have seen this industry um and the the medium itself evolve in so many ways since you started. We'll definitely get into that. Mm -hmm. I, I wanna talk to you about that. But before we get into that, I wanna ask if you can talk about you talked about your background, mm -hmm. how you got into podcasting, which I think is really super amazing and it really is about seizing those opportunities, right? When they come in front of you, you might not know what it's about, mm -hmm. but that's how we expand, right? We, mm -hmm. we meet one person that changes a trajectory um, that we didn't know the day before. So that's how easy life can shift and change for us. So that's really right. dope. I, I really love that story. Um, so talk to us about Indie uh, Creative Network. You created mm -hmm. that in 2016. What made you go from having your own podcast, Encore? And by the way, is that still available for listening? Can anybody? Yes, Encore Radio Show is still available for listening. Oh, the nice. first like 200 and change episodes are not online. Uh, when I created Any Creative Network in 2016, I had just come out of a, I guess I could share this story. Yeah, so I was a part, I had bounced from radio station to radio station, um, trying to make my way to Hot 97. This whole journey for me was like, you know what? Well, if I could do this, I could make my way onto, you know, Hot 97 or Power 105.1 or one of the other radio stations to continue to build my radio uh, real, because that's what this was for me when I first started. Um, I, prior to, first off, Actually, today is December 21st. Yesterday was Combat Jack's uh, death anniversary. So I just want to say rest in peace to Combat Jack. He actually was a huge, 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 huge reason why I said, like, yeah, I definitely could do this. Because um, I watched his transition from PNC Radio, which is also another local radio station in New York, to his own uh, podcast network, Loudspeakers Network. So... This was me just looking at combat and be like, yeah, like I can see this man being like my mentor. I could see him. I I, I see his path and I I, I want to live something like that, you know? So uh, anyway, so I was bouncing from radio station to radio station. And um, in my last radio station, I just realized that like I had a, a, a conversation with the program manager and they were just trying to get me to fit my show that I had built for four, four years at that point to be into their mold of their radio station. And I just realized like, you know what? Like I've done this so many times. Like I'm tired of doing this, you know, like I want to go out on my own. So I said, you know what? I'm going to take a little bit of a break. So I think we stopped recording say May of 2015 and we resumed in August of 2015 
with Indie Creative Network as the sole uh, publisher for our content. So I brought, started to, I recruited a couple other shows um, that I was already familiar with, um, some that were like in the New York area, but some that were more so scattered around the country because I wanted to build like a space for uh, artists. What most For one, my show was music-based. So I wanted to build a space where if an artist was on tour, they could hit a stop in Dallas, hit a stop in Atlanta, come to New York and get uh, podcast interviews along that tour route. So it would build um, just like a relationship with like the artist managers and the labels and stuff like that, but also showcase into these artists that like, you don't have to just go to Hot 97 or Power 105.1. You could come to these independent platforms to also get your message out because like, you know, we, we have the term micro influencer now, but that wasn't a terminology back then. And there's value in that, you know? So to make a long story short, uh, we created a network. We started to put episode, publish episodes. I had a website um, and a Twitter and Instagram, all the all the things to again like market the content to people. Uh, in 2016 October, we opened up a podcast studio that was um, called ICN Studios, which was a space where not only was I able to cater to um, shows that were on my podcast network, and that was part of our membership deal. But we also were able to cater to shows that were just in the New York City area that wanted to record um, affordably, you know. And that I recognized as, again, as a pod, someone that had been recording shows for this 2016, so five years by that point, I was like, yeah, like, recording is a bitch. Like, it costs a lot of money to <laughs> to book a studio, you know, like, let's try to find a way to bring down the production costs so that more people in my community will be able to get involved in this budding podcasting space. So that is really, like, the journey of where we, we went and how I even got to where I am, where I was and where I am now. You know, like, the ICN Studios ended up closing, I would say, like, 2017, October 2017, due to, like, terrible flooding in new york um and from there which is like okay well we're gonna d go digital so by 27 by 2018 we were super digital platform we were already digital ready pre-pandemic so you know i did open up another studio space um and that's the, to live to, I, to live i believe that's the one that you actually came to um we opened up another studio space and the pandemic shut that one down but even though the pandemic shut that down, we were already digital ready and digital prepared. So we decided to take all of our things further online. We opened up an online recording studio and this, that, and the third. So it just is, this is just a story of like uh, obstacles and triumphs, <laughs> obstacles and triumphs, or, or, you know, like ideas and failures and, you know, re-implementing new ideas based on uh, the failure that I had before. Yeah, yeah, man. It's uh, adapting, adjusting what we have to mm. do <laughs> quite mm -hmm. often to simply survive. And I respect y'all's, um, you and I know some of your team as well. And you all have a, a great deal of resiliency inside of making sure that there is a platform uh, for Black and Brown folks to uh, be able to share what's on their mind, tell their stories. Um, so that's a big deal, man. So I just want to give you your flowers for that. Uh, Thank you. It's major. Thank you. And you don't have to still be here. So that's saying something. A lot. Mm -hmm. Saying a lot. So as um 11 plus year veteran in the audio industry, how have your roles and responsibilities um, evolved over time? Because I know that they have and you worn so many hats. But specifically, like, where are you now as far as which role have you now graduated into? Yeah, I mean, honestly, that is a great question. Um, I use the term audio professional because at any in any given project, I could be one of plenty different roles, you know. Um, I would say I'm less of the engineer now, which is something I did a lot more when I had my podcast studio and I was physically there literally every single day. But now I'm more so into production and marketing podcasts. I this year alone I've uh produced five podcasts and edited and while I if I'm producing a podcast, more likely I'm editing it, but I also 
just edit shows as well too so for example um, i worked on a show this uh february called shit well i guess technically last february when this comes out uh called chefish um and in 2023 it also won best uh food and drink podcast award at the black pot awards that one i was just the editor like i shared the insights that i had but i worked with an amazing producer one another person on my team shout out to Quana bolden she's also the founder of carefree black girl and carefree black girl podcast we've worked together since 2000 and so you know it's the to the circle everything back like the any creative network was a space for people to yes to get tools and res resources the part of those resources is to learn how to be a podcast producer like when Quana came to me to talk about Carefree Black Girl podcast, she came to me because she knew that I had the experience to help this idea that she had turn into something. Fast forward to now, she's the like she she is the award winning podcast producer, and I'm the award winning podcast editor. Like in terms of like growth and what I wanted to see out of my network, that is what I wanted to see out of my network: the opportunities to give other people opportunities and to then work with them and build with them beyond just what we do. Uh, what we started with. That's awesome, man. And uh, shout out to Quana. And uh, speaking of the Carefree Black Girl podcast, uh, which I know is a project that is near and dear to you uh, for different reasons, um, but it's an amazing podcast and um, it's the messaging is important. I know that there has been um, some host shifts in, um, mm -hmm. in recent uh, months, which is something that I think we may not talk about it here that may be more of the story for carefree black girl podcast, mm -hmm. but it's a thing, right. And mm -hmm. it happens. And so I think it's important to um, at least go and find out the stories and how people are able to maintain their podcast, even when there are shifts that happen. But again, speaking of carefree black girl podcast, can you share what makes this podcast stand out um, the most for you when it comes to your um, network. And I, I know you don't want to play favorites or anything like that. And I'm not asking you to, <laughs> but I know Carefree Black Girl Podcast, just having myself seen how it's grown and how it's not necessarily changed directions, but it has expanded in mm -hmm. all of the directions that it's, it's going. So to me, I would think that it's almost like the model mm -hmm. in a way mm -hmm. for other ways in which ICN may approach podcast and podcast marketing and community. So all of that to say, what is it about Carefree Black Girl Podcast that you think um, attributes to a success? And um, it's also been around for quite some time. Shout out to you all for the seasons. I mean, mm. it's, it's amazing. Yes, sir. Nine seasons. I will say um, it is really the authenticity as a podcast and just as a brand in general. You know, like we use the term podcast because that is what we do. You know, it can almost be seen as a verb in itself. But uh, a podcast is a product that you have, you know, it is a product. And Carefree Black Girl itself, it has its own North Star and it's black women and femmes, okay? So we know whenever we're talking about a topic, whenever we're thinking about a season, whenever we're thinking about how we approach something, it is with the, the idea of who our audience is. Aside from that, uh, Carefree Black Girl is a lifestyle brand, so, this was, you know, going back to 2016 when Quana approached me about this, this was my first opportunity to say, okay, well, I could take a lifestyle brand that already exists somewhere and build out an audio arm, a voice for this platform. You know, at the time, Carefree Black Girl was a already and was and still is a popular like hashtag <clears throat> getting, you know, hundreds of thousands of, of clicks and posts and stuff on Instagram and Twitter. It was already doing its own thing. And it's just like, okay, well, how do we now uh, guide that voice, right? Because there were a lot of people who were writing stories about what is a carefree black girl and Quana as the trademark owner was trying to grab that narrative and be able to say, if you want to know what a carefree black girl is, listen to this podcast. You know, I like to attribute it all to her, you know, and knowing like, this is what I want to do. And this is how I move forward with it. And I myself was a part of the vessel that helped take it to that, to that place or where it is now. That's awesome, man. Um, I just love Carefree Black Girl. I've been to cookouts. I listened to the, to the podcast mm -hmm. uh, and having met Kwana and yourself, um, knowing you all personally, I just love the whole movement of it. And um, congratulations to everybody involved. 
Thank and you. maintaining the podcast and the success of it. What do you find most rewarding about helping others share their stories through your services through ICN? Mm. Like the most, I honestly, so storytelling is what I like the most, you know, like I, for a long time, I felt like, I felt like I had opportunities. I was privileged to have opportunities to like have a computer early. I had my computer, my first computer when I was 10, it was my 10th birthday, you know, like I had that advantage, that leg up to say, okay, well, I could talk to people online, you know? There are people who are now, who are discovering that they can talk to people online in 2023. I turned 10 in 1998. So I had a large jump um, of, on them in general. And when I went to college, again, another opportunity to, you know, have a quote unquote leg up on people, you know, like, okay, I networked with, and that's what college is for. For those of you listening, I networked with a hell of a lot of people who, you know, went here, there and everywhere after we all graduated. And that is my network. I was able to, you know, learn and study from people who were, you know, if I'm, if I'm an early adopter, they were like, you know, the beginning of the internet, they had opportunity to guide me so that I didn't make as many missteps. So when I came back to um, Flatbush, Brooklyn, which is where I'm from. And I walked on Church Avenue and realized that there were stores that had zero online presence. Stores, uh, businesses that like Yelp wasn't even a thing at that point, but you know, they weren't even on Google Maps. Like you, if you were not walking the street, you didn't know that these built, these businesses existed. And I liked that at the time because it's just like, okay, well, you know what? This is my, this is from my community. You know, like we talk about gentrification, like this was just my community, but like we were in our little cubby, 300,000 folks and Flatbush, East Flatbush, like we was good. But at the same time, it's like for these businesses to get to the next level, like how can I be involved in that? And I knew that I already had the skill sets to do that. So, you know, prior to me even getting into podcasting prior to me even launching the any creative network what i was doing was helping businesses get online building web building affordable websites for them giving them an online presence so that they could say okay well hey you can visit me at www dot blah blah blah, blah dot com or dot net or whatever to find out more about my business you know so it is a story but it's more so about making sure that my community can compete on the level that every other community can compete at, you know, and I'm talking, I don't want to get all into race and everything like that, but that's really what it is. You know, like we got to make sure that like, I, I want to make sure that my community was able to compete on industry standard level for, every, uh, you know, alongside everyone else, you know, and we saw a lot of, we saw the, the power of digital when COVID happened, there were a lot of restaurants that will not, would not have been able to survive if it wasn't for the, the, the power of like, Again, Yelp and Uber Eats and DoorDash, all these other things, you know, like these would not have been viable solutions or viable interests for businesses at that time, you know, prior to that time. But like at the same time, you know, that's the direction that we're going in, and, you know, and I'm not to jump into another topic real quick, but same thing with AI, you know, like a lot of businesses are fighting uh, a losing battle you know, sorry to say, you know, they're fighting a losing battle. If you don't take the time to get involved under at bare minimum, understand what's going on, you're going to be left behind. And, you know, I, I feel like I have a lot to handle with podcasting. So AI, I'm going to have to leave that battle for somebody else. But, you know, it's just, a, you know, you see the waves to the, to your point earlier, like being in this for so long, you see the, the varying waves of, how digital evolves and how businesses have to evolve with it or get left behind. Absolutely, man. Um, I, I joke a lot that I am, I wasn't born in, in, in 88. I was born much, 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 much earlier than that. <laughs> and, um, and what's cool about that is I always think what a time to be alive, right? I, I grew up in the analog world. Mm -hmm. I mean, Caller ID, three way, all that was new. That was mm. that was new innovations, right? And call waiting. Now I'm in a, 
Right, all of that, man. And now I'm in a world where everything is on my phone, uh, you know, AI, all of these things. And it is one of those things, man. It's it's hard. I don't I hate all of it because <laughs> why would I not? I'm a grumpy old man, but it's here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. And I gotta work with it. And as a matter of fact, I'm coming out with a podcast. Mm -hmm. Um and and my theme song is completely AI generated. Oh, nice! Completely, and it's wasn't the easiest thing to do. Um, and I had to choose. I had to finally just be like, okay, I guess this will work. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> but um, but it's it is good, right? I wouldn't have chosen. I you know I chose from several. But the mm -hmm. point is, is that AI is here. AI can make our life simpler. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, it can do things that we never, I mean, who would have thought that I would have had a song with my name in it? Like, come on, what, <laughs> what happens there? Right. That's cool. Um, and so, so I say all that to say, you are absolutely right. Um, the times are coming where AI will be even much more um, of something that we're going to almost have to incorporate within our podcast in order to for us to stay marketable, viable, and relevant mm -hmm. um that day is not here yet mm -hmm. carry on everyone but <laughs> as why i said at least have an understanding a base understanding yeah and be willing and be willing mm -hmm. to move with it because otherwise we get left behind and that's that's not okay yeah um so from your uh, extensive experience what is the one key piece of advice you would offer to our audience of audio professionals Let's start with the aspiring audio professional. Mm -hmm. For the aspiring audio professional, I will say, I mean, I'm going to go back to just being authentic, you know, and just remembering and just telling your story, right? Now, let's strip away the tech, strip away the mic, strip away the, 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 the camera, strip away all these things. You are telling a story. And when you get in front of the mic, you get in front of the, the video camera, you are just dictating that and recording that for other people to consume but the base level your foundation is the story so you have to start there a lot of people have an idea and they want to start a podcast and they get overwhelmed rightfully so with the amount of things that you have to do to start launch and maintain said podcast but you cannot get lost in the weeds of that because at the end of the day you are telling a story you know even if you have whether that is you have a a, a podcast that just goes episodes one through you know a hundred or whatever you don't ever do seasons or anything like that each 10 each 15 each seven i don't care whatever however you want to break it down each of them can have a theme that you are helping to your audience to understand of why you even like this thing you know and that's not that doesn't require you to go on a 10 minute rant about why you like this thing it could be laid out over three four or five x amount of episodes about why this thing is so important to you you know uh for example i just had this uh this uh podcast called totally women podcast I was working on it from july of this year july 2023 uh just had their season finale in december and um that show is all about women's health right so you know yeah we could talk about women's health we could just pluck ideas and, and topics from the ether but at the same time like my host rosemary crossdale she had her own story that she wanted to tell you know by the time we got to November, November could have was it actually was about grieving during the holidays because it was a 10 year anniversary of her son passing away, you know, so it only further showcases. Yeah, I'm sure. She, yeah, she was a nurse beforehand, but like her involvement with health and her um, the, the the key factor that makes it that important to her is the fact that like, yes, I live through some of these things that I want to make sure that other women, even if they have to go through it, because that's just how life is, they have a resource at, to talk to, to listen to, to find out more information. They have that. And that's important to me. Man, I think it's so important. Um, 
and you you alluded to it without actually saying it that there is a place for people's voices everyone's voices because one of the things that I really love about this audio space and podcasting, especially for us, is that I know I'm very clear that we're laying down our living record, right? Of our own perspectives, our stories, our experiences. And I think that is so important. And there may be other topics around your experience or your story, but no one went through your story but right. you, right? Right. And um, no one can speak to it from a perspective but your own, right? And there is someone out there who might listen to that other podcast that's has that theme, but they're not it. This is not who I relate to. It's not landing, but mm -hmm. I listen to over here, same topic, similar theme, but it's landing because it's mm -hmm. you. Right. And so right. I think that's so important and a reason for us to not only stay in this uh, app industry, but get into it. Um, so thank you for that story. What would you say to audio professionals the podcast industry this year mm -hmm. and last year, I could say, has really been shaking up in a lot of ways, a lot of layoffs and all this sort of thing. Um, the good news for you is that you're independent, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, a lot of that stuff doesn't touch you, but it touches your friends, I'm yes, sure. Yes, yes, And so, um, And so we want to just say, you know, shout out to all of you who are still trying at this thing that is seemingly very unstable at this time. Um, but they're passionate about their work. And I've seen some LinkedIn posts that just like, I'm, I'm at the brink of giving up in, mm -hmm. on this industry. I'm either too creative or haven't done enough for them to say yes, right? What would you say to those folks who are audio professionals who are being affected by the industry right now, uh, whether they're independent or they work for other folks, uh, what would be your one piece that you would give to them? I would like to say first, sorry that this is happening because, uh, you know, a lot of us got into this not for the money or not for the fame or the clout or anything like that. We got into it because we like, we like audio. AV was never cool, right? We just, we like this, you know? So, to see, you know, this is just the the unfortunate portion of when capitalism, you know, and creativity meet and clash, you know. Uh so sorry on on just to start there. Uh I would say don't give up. Um, this is one of the reasons why I really built my career when I first started on being independent, so that when things are moving or getting shaky in the industry. I still have work coming in, you know, to be quite frank. Uh, in 2022, I ended up working at a company, um, helped build out their whole podcast network. And in 2023, in October, uh, they let me go, you know. But, and I was stressed, you know, despite having, for one, prior to all that, having survivor's guilt, watching the industry just kind of implode on itself uh, and just being like, damn, like, I feel so bad. I'm happy that this, I'm happy this is not me, but I feel bad that this is happening to the industry. And then it ended up happening to me. I'm like, oh well, this sucks. Double time now, you know. But I had show have shows like Carefree Black Girl Podcast, like the Sobering Podcast. Shout out to my guys in South Africa, like Totally Women Podcast, where I'm working on all year round, like Chefish. I'm working on these shows, so the money doesn't stop coming in. But aside from that. I don't stop, I don't stop creating, you know, so that when opportunities do come forward, you know, I can still, I still have my foot somewhere in the industry, you know, and I could say, hey, despite the industry being roiled for 18 months, I still put out five podcasts last year, you know, I still ideated, launched, marketed, created, made assets for cut clips, all, every single day you know that never that work never stopped you know so don't give up even if you have to create your own podcast edit be the host be the producer be the person that's emailing everybody the scheduler you that's what you might have to just do 
to continue along this path, you know, and I know it's hard and I know it's tough and I don't want to sound privileged because I do have my own mic. I'm sitting in my own house doing my own thing, but this, like, this is what you have to do. Like when I started for real, realizing that, you know what, like, I don't want to keep paying hundreds of dollars to record in a studio. I bought a $250 Zoom H5 and I traveled around with that, you know, and I set up anywhere <laughs> with my little Zoom and a couple mics, and I was just talking to folks just to make sure that I was getting more content, able to produce more content, able to edit and just refine my skills over and over again, you know? So, uh, yes, that's, that's a long-winded way of saying never give up. Yeah, I and I completely agree with that. And thank you for sharing your own story, uh, because I think it is important for people to be like, oh, okay, well, he can relate to me. I won't say uh, STFU. Um, <laughs> right. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> right. Right. Because it's hard, you know, and, and I know it's hard uh, running an event. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, to your point, and if you can, like, I understand um, what comes along with all of this hardship and worry and concern about your livelihood. Mm -hmm. It quite frankly brings on uh, depression and anxiety in a mm -hmm. lot of ways. Right. Mm -hmm. um, that can be diagnosed. Um, or just those symptoms that you you know you never get diagnosed, but it's still there and it's still real mm -hmm. and it's still very present. And so when we can muster up the energy to keep doing work, to keep at it, right? Like you said, to keep fulfilling ourselves inside of the work, whether that mm -hmm. work is being seen at the moment, um, I think is super important because the, the opportunities will, um, I believe that they will return if not in the industry for self mm -hmm. and to be able to continue to do work that, that makes you feel alive because it's not about anybody else. And that's, I think a, another piece that we, we often do is that we create an external measurement of ourselves um, that then distracts us from staying in the work that we love. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, yeah, absolutely. Stay in the work. Um, let people know and see that you are still doing the work because that's important too. that portfolio is important. Um, yes, it is. Yes, yeah, it is. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, I appreciate that response um, because it's real. And I, I do think all of us want this industry to stay and remain and, and be viable and to continue to excel. And I don't, I think that's, and I believe that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, so we just got to stick with it in this time period because it, it's not going to define the industry long term if that, mm -hmm. if that helps anyone. Yeah. Because I'm just simply looking in my mirror and saying that to over and over to myself. And I hope that it becomes true. Listen, but, um, entrepreneurship yeah. is as close to insanity as you're going to get. You have to be the person to believe in the vision that no one else can't see. Absolutely. Absolutely. I call it um, insane optimism, right? Mm -hmm. You have to literally be close to insanity in order to continue to keep your op optimism up. Um. Because then you'll be like, am I fucking insane <laughs> that yeah. I'm still believing? Um, and sure, whatever works. But I'm going to continue to stay mm. optimistic no matter what it is, because this is our industry. And it really right. is, in my opinion wise, it's up to us, right? It's up to us that, that are um, a part of it, have a passion for it, know that this can work to keep pushing it forward. Mm -hmm. um, so let's move on to the next question. Okay. And it, it goes right into like this conversation. We see how the industry is. I don't want the word devolving is coming up for me, but it's not that. It really is just a, a situation that we're, we're in. It's a situation ship mm -hmm. uh, where, again, capitalism, big bubbles, um, you know, industry foresight, um, it didn't quite pan out. But we're going to get back on track. So besides that, right, besides the things that um, we are seeing that are really ugly about the industry, what have you seen in the podcast industry um, and how it's evolved over the past decade? What challenges can you see someone new coming in? There are a lot of audio professionals out here right now who are in the moment, like, should I even get into the podcasting industry? Because it don't look like it, right? Mm -hmm, should I get mm -hmm. out of the podcasting industry? Because yeah. it does look like I should, right? Yeah. What would you say to folks, that, knowing how it's evolved? What's your opinion? I would say, honestly, at its, like right now, I would just really say building your transferable skills. You know, like, it may stink to have to apply to a job outside of podcasting right now. 
right? But that's not to say that there are not opportunities out there that you could get involved in that are podcast adjacent or audio adjacent to keep refining those skills, as I said. Um, but <clears throat> for people who are like just getting into it, you know, I would say build on the technology that's going to propel this forward. And we're going to circle all the way back now to AI, right? Personally, for me, some of the hardest things that I've ever had to do in podcasting were the things that I didn't necessarily enjoy the most, like writing comprehensive episode show notes, right? Coming up with nice graphics, coming up with creative, like other creative assets like uh, audiograms, you know, to entice someone, quote cards to entice someone to get involved in in what I'm putting out, whichever show it is. Um, but the power of AI has made some of those things significantly easier. And I mean, like, click of a button easier. And when this, this roiling of our industry is complete and people start to rehire, they're gonna be looking for folks who are not doing it the old way, but they're gonna be looking for the folks who are doing it the new way. You know, they're gonna be looking for folks who can do what we do faster, smarter. And again, we're talking about capitalism. So with a quicker return on investment, you know, and AI is that tool to do so. You know, there are a lot of questions about AI and um, the ethical portion of it whether it's, you know, about how it perceives people in our community or how it can take away jobs from our community. But I'm speaking, and I'm speaking from like a producer, editor perspective right now, you know, like I just had to slash a job because I produce and I edit. Those are two mutually exclusive things. But over, I would say once you got past that first, initial wave of podcast interest so we're talking 26 on to about 2021 now you are if you want to be a producer you're going to be a producer and editor or you're not working nowhere as a producer full stop you know and that is where we're going to be 2024 and on you know till whenever the next wave comes in you know if you are applying to jobs and you don't know what chat gpt is or or you don't use like the script and you're not like cranking out like transcripts or reading through transcripts or having AI summarize some uh summarize it for your episode show notes or even making chapters, you know? Like I don't feel like chapters are like a huge thing right now, but especially if you're talking about like a true crime podcast or, you know, anything of anything even closely aligned to that where people want to jump from, you know, place to place or know what's coming up. Those are things you're going to have to be involved in. So stay up on the news, the podcast industry news, you know, and again, if you're not able to find work like there, you could, maybe you could be a audiobook producer in the meantime, or audiobook editor, or maybe you go to the local studio and you're engineering music set, music, musician set it, uh, sessions or something like that. Like these are all things that you're going to have to do to build up those transferable skills so that when the time comes and there's a thousand applications in for one position that you stand out amongst those. Absolutely. And, um, you know, I dare say for those of us who are creative and in creative work, that there are probably some projects that you have in your own mind that you wanted to create for so long and decided to not because you went for an, an opportunity that was, you know, going to pay the bills and that sort of thing. But lean back into those independent ideas that you had uh, before you went somewhere else or before you mm -hmm. waited on anyone else and um, pull those back out. Right. I, as a creative, as a creative's coach, I talk a lot about parking lot ideas, right? Something that you may not have had the time or the opportunity to do at a certain point, you park it and you go back to it, right? Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. But don't forget about those things because that will keep you moving forward in ways that you don't even know. And I, I can speak for myself as a creative. 
when the shit hits the fan, when I can go back in my creative bag, that uh, saves lives mm -hmm. <laughs> in a lot mm -hmm. of ways. No, seriously. In a lot of ways. Yeah, yeah. So as you um, look ahead to 2024, what new projects or initiatives are you excited about starting or completing? Mm -hmm. So January 16th, Totally Women Season 2 comes, uh, will be restarting. Um, I'm very excited about that because um, personally for me, uh, getting involved in podcasting and like my next step personally, and it's been my next step, is to make sure that people can get opportunities alongside me and not that I'm just doing everything, you know? Uh, so for Totally Women Season 2, I'm going to be working with Quana as a producer, and I'm going to be co-producer on that one. So I'm excited about that. Uh, January 17th, uh, Season 8 of the Sobering Podcast, uh, they return as well, too. I'm the executive producer for that show that's now on Revolt Podcast Network. So I'm very excited for that because this is one of the two, three, one of the three shows that are international that's on that podcast network. And I was the one that brought them over from ICN because I want my company at this point now has been like a <clears throat> a birthing ground, in, you know, in in a sense, for shows. And, you know, whether whether the next steps of those shows are to transition to a, a network, a, a different network, a better network, a whatever network, you know, I want to be there to help that process along the way because I don't I don't want to I never wanted to build something that just like kept people you know, in or, or, or locked in or anything like that. Like, I want you to be able to uh, further expand on some of the ideas and opportunities you get. So those two, that's January. Uh, hopefully Chef Fish comes back for season two. Really excited about that one because that was basically a show about Atlanta-based um, business owners and chefs. Met a lot of amazing people out there. So super excited about that. Carrie Black Girls 100th episode would also be in 2024 as well, too. Uh, and, and not to just be ranting about all these shows, but yeah, this is like my quarter one, you know. Um, I have other shows that are that are in that are in the works. Um, you know, you just use an analogy. Uh, I'm gonna use a different one. I like to set up planting pots drop a seed in, fill it with dirt and water it and let those build. And when they build, and as they're building, I'm, you know, in the process continually watering them as well. But like, I'm starting, I'm only now starting to see some of the, uh, the growth and seeds from shows that I started in 2016, 2017. So I can only imagine as we get to 2024, I'm going to start seeing some growth from the 2018 show, the twenty. The 2019 shows, like on 2020, but 2021, 22, like I'm gonna start seeing some of those uh, those opportunities further snowball into other opportunities. So I'm just really excited for not just being involved in them, but uh, still having a connection to my community to say, you know what, I'm overwhelmed with any one of these projects. I can call on anyone to say, hey. I have this po this podcast project, uh, whether I need you to be an editor, whether I need you to be a producer, whether I need you to be a script writer, a story editor, you know, like, please help me. And I know that I could find someone um, who would also want to be involved for um, and get paid and get paid and get paid, not just doing free work because we not milk is seven dollars. <laughs> we not in that time <laughs> right now. Okay, that's exciting, man. Um, well, I'm looking forward to your uh, Q1 because that sounds like uh, a lot of awesome work and creative output. That's super dope. I asked in the um, in the forum when I was getting folks to to sign up for this about your tech stack. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to know if briefly you uh, you mentioned like some AI stuff, and um, again, we we think it's really important, but it's also very important that we. Uh, let people know the the tools for our own success. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I just wanted to shout out one um, as you were talking about show notes and video and all this sort of thing. Cast Magic is a game changer. If you haven't heard of it before, it's exactly as it says. Cast Magic. Um, go and look it up and see what it's all about as far as AI and really helping you to be more efficient and automated mm -hmm. with. Um, the podcast outputs, the byproducts of the podcast, mm. the show notes, <laughs> the captions, all of that that you need. 
So for you, what is it that you use and just how has it benefited your production? Yeah. So, um, I will start with recording. So I use Riverside.fm for those who are wondering where they can find it. Um, I like started using Riverside in June of 2022. And I like using that because, and I just like Squadcast, it allows you to record locally. So, you know, we've all been on Zoom calls where the person's well, internet starts acting wonky and they start sounding like a robot. Squadcast and Riverside, they record locally, meaning that you are recording and to your computer. So the internet mis uh, disconnection that may have happened, you know, on the, the actual live recording itself, your recording does not have that. So I love Riverside for that. When I'm done with Riverside, <laughs> I take my audio over to Descript. Um, Descript for me has been something I also started using in um, Mm, I just started a little earlier. So maybe like mm, May, April or so of 2022. And um, I love the script as well, too, because prior to that, I had never really dove into like podcast transcription. And, um, you know, for those of you who don't know, I have a sister who's deaf. So she knows that I am a podcast producer, but she's never listened to any of my work. So to be able to just have the ability to say, you know, to give her a transcript, which I'm sure she's not really reading or diving into like that, but the opportunity to, you know, like we don't want to exclude people um, from this, from our industry either, you know, so the opportunity to, for um, deaf and hard of hearing people to get involved in podcasting. Um, I love that. Also, from a marketing perspective, if you have transcripts and you upload it, um, that helps with your search engine optimization. Anyway, so the script, I love that. They actually just added in like an AI. Well, they already were an AI tool, but they added an additional AI tool now that can summarize. Uh, well, you could do a lot, act to do a lot of things. Like it can do a lot of things, not even get into it. But one that I liked the most that just came out was that it can now summarize your episode for you. So I don't have to take my audio um, or take the transcript and take it over to chat GPT, which is the AI tool that I use to summarize the podcast um, coming up with. I use that to come up with episode show notes. Sometimes I even use it to come up with episode titles, you know, or I throw out like, hey, Chad GPT, um, I'm, uh, I have an, uh, an episode that is about beautiful, the word beautiful. Give me 10 different titles that I could use with the word beautiful in it just to start the content creation uh, process. And I can give those to my to the host and say, hey, which of these 10 do you like? Or I can get those 10 and then ideate on those and then give her three or so, or him or her three or four of them and say, hey, which of these do you like? You know, so uh, those are the tools that I use primarily. Um, once I'm done with uh, the script, I do put my all of my content. I edit my final audio in um, Adobe Audition. I've used Logic. I've used Audition. I've used uh, Audacity, which is a free tool for those who might not know. Um, uh, but yeah, right now I'm using uh, Adobe Audition. So that's my tech stack. Awesome. Awesome. Do you edit in the script as well? I do. I do. Yeah. Yeah. That's a game changer in a lot of ways for anyone who is still um, editing off of audio only. Mm -hmm. He has my sympathies and, <laughs> and uh, you know, it, um, it still takes time, right? Yeah. He's doing it in this script and then mm -hmm. we still have to get the gaps out, the, yeah. the, all of that. Um, so I still spend time on my audio only editing, but the script, um, that initial editing changes lives. It does. And it's also easier for collaboration because um, I started using it because not everyone at the last place I was working at, um, had any experience with DAWs, Digital Audio Workstations, for those who don't know what that acronym is. They weren't familiar with it. So it's like, okay, well, how do we get them to be able to review what we're editing? And the script was that also that option. And um, it's been a game changer, like you said. Um, you can literally, for those who don't know or who never used it before, you can edit the you can edit the word and it takes it out of the audio itself, you know. Um there are a lot of other advantages of that, but being able to see visually what someone said helps with story editing 
at bare minimum. You don't have to listen to the whole thing to see where the conversation is going. You can skim through it and see where the conversation went, <laughs> you know? So this uh, it definitely a game changer. You know, I, I was one of those people who was literally um, editing with audio only and didn't have a problem with it, but this saves me so much time now. And again, it's another one of those tools that, you know, if you're not, if you're not editing, if you're not learning the script or if you're not learning these new products that are coming out for our industry, when you go to look for a job, they're going to ask you for them. If you don't have that skill set, they're going to move on. Absolutely, man. Listen, Wise, it's been great talking to you. Um, one, it's been great catching up with mm -hmm. you. Um, Every time, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And two, you know, it's it's been cool to really de dive deeper into um, your history and your experience. I think it's really cool. And um, despite we the fact that we've talked quite a bit, um, I learned some new things. So that's always um, awesome. And I appreciate that. Uh, so, where can people find more about ICN and the podcast that you produce? All right. So to find ICN, um, it is ICN.DJ. That is our website. On Instagram, we are ICNDJ, where you can find all of the audiograms from all the, for many of the episodes that we've put out over the past seven years. And on, on Twitter, formerly known as X, in my mind, um, you can uh, find us at ICN underscore DJ. Now, if you're looking for a producer, editor, or just someone who can just give you insight on podcasting, I have no problem with people picking my brain briefly about the industry. You know, a lot of the things are available online. If you hit me up or DM me, I will definitely respond to you. I'm not bougie like that. If you hit me on LinkedIn, I'll definitely respond to you as well too. Um, I love to connect, connect and build network on LinkedIn. So that's primarily where I've been, but you can definitely find my funny tweets, <laughs> retweets, and stories about my life and my family <laughs> on Twitter and Instagram uh at the real wise w-i-z-e dope man dope so i'm gonna uh close this out and just stay right there for me i want to give a big thanks to our afros and audio and black podcast community for supporting our commitment for community and collaboration if you'd like to join the black podcast association the link will be in the description below and if you want to join us at the sixth annual afros and audio podcast festival visit www.afrosandaudio.com Follow Afros and Audio on all social media channels, and you can find and follow me at Talib Jassir. So thanks again, Wise, for being a part of Afros and Audio's Black History Month interview series. I really appreciate it. This was a great conversation, man. Yes, man. Thank you for having me. And happy Black History Month, folks.